Welcome back once again guys here to the hillside. We are stuck inside again due to the nasty weather but nevertheless there's always something growing on inside and today we are going to prune back this Kalanchoe plant. So this is a very common house plant. A lot of people get them around the holidays or Valentine's gift because of the pink flowers on them often come in reds and yellows as well and then they just kind of discard them but if you take care of it it will live indefinitely. This is about three years old. It started from a little plant that was about this big. And now it's this big monstrous thing. So that being said, it's time to prune this thing back to kind of get it under control. Um, if you take care of your plants in the late winter, uh, February time frame, even January, this, uh, this thing started blooming early this year. I don't know why it was the weather or something. Anyhow, when you start seeing your flowers like this starting to really kind of fade out, it's time to prune your plant back anyways to kind of put the life back into the plant and not into blooms. But that being said, I also need to prune this plant back massively. Let me show you why. Come in close. All right, so checking this out really close, look at this plant. A, it looks pretty awesome, honestly, with this little spindly, like snake-like little plant in there in the base. That is really awesome. So I do want to be able to preserve this feature but like you look at the periphery, the plant is just too big. It's very difficult to even get water down in here. Water just splashes around because you really can't get in here too easily uh, anyways. But if you look even closer down in here, check out this. Remember how I did a video on aerial roots? Well, this plant has put on tons and tons and tons of aerial roots everywhere down here along the trunk. So as we prune these off, look for things like this because this is how we're gonna propagate new plants and don't worry, I'll show you how to do it. It is super easy. Okay, so follow along with me and let me uh, just kind of demonstrate how we're going to prune this thing back. Okay, so the general rule of thumb when pruning these back is you do want to remove the flower uh, stem because this is, you know, not going to do anything to your plant. It's just draining the, the, uh, the life out of the plant as it's trying to produce seeds, but it's not going to indoors. So that being said, pruning it just to this really doesn't promote a really bushier habit and it's just going to keep just getting more and more growth on the outside. We're trying to encourage growth on the inside of the plant where all these nice aerial roots and life uh, and these dormant buds that are back here on the stems will actually spring to life. So that being said, let me try another example here. The rule is you want to go a third of the way back. So if this is the bloom and this is the stem which comes down to here, you would want to go about to here to kind of uh, you know promote a bushier dividing habit but you know still it's still too big so what I'm gonna do and just gotta be brave and trust me if you look down in here you see the, how this has aerial root right there aerial roots down in here and a node okay these are gonna be able to grow if you want to propagate them this is a new shoot coming off of the main stem here already trying to put new blooms on so here's what you need to do guys getting here really close like this you're going to cut it off just like that, okay? Be brave, be brave, it will grow back. And you have this nice little plant here, which is going to be able to produce two awesome cuttings. You can pull it apart easily. Now you see all these aerial roots right here on the plant, like that. Okay, and on this one as well, it has the aerial roots formed right there. Just barely put these in the ground, and they're going to start sprouting instantly. Okay, so just watch. I'm going to go ahead and uh, prune the rest of this tree up a little bit. And uh, it's not really a tree, but I'm trying to prune it back. So it's not really a bonsai operation to kind of got, you know, get that in your head. But in a way, it kind of is. You know, you're preserving the life of the tree or the plant by pruning it back, encouraging it to maintain a smaller, more compact shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and prune this back a little bit. And you can kind of follow along. And uh, we'll talk about how to propagate the, uh, the cuttings when we're done. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So once again, you find a nice spot on this plant that you're going to print it back to. This is a good spot. Cutting it off right there. Once again, just be brave. Now, what I've done when I've cut this back, you can see these leaves have been shaded out so much by the uh, other growth. And they're really weak and really not going to do much for you. So at this time, take any weak, discolored, or faded out. That one could probably stay that's going to just encourage the plant even more to put on new growth to replace what you've taken away from it. Okay, so that being said, let me go ahead and chop some more of this back and I'll get back with you. Okay. 
Okay, so, so far you've seen I've cut these back pretty severe and the plant is really starting to open up the center of this plant here. Now look just how much growth of this is actually coming over, which is kind of, it's kind of a shame to cut it back, but it will, it will reinvigorate the plant and grow back. And like I said, making cuttings from this plant is very, very, very simple. So this operation can really produce many, many more plants for you. So don't worry, just got to go and just trust it. Okay. So let's just keep cutting this thing back here. And just, just think when you're doing this about the final design, like what do you want this to look like? You want to make sure it's even and kind of balanced. Now, as you can tell, this side was away from the window. So it, all the energy was focused on growing this way, which I'm trying to, trying to do that, but where it was so one-sided, I couldn't really turn it around because all the growth would be smashed up against the window. So, you know, it's, it's actually in the best interest of the plant to kind of go back and actually do this to help it, you know, reinvigorate itself. Now right here, this can be kind of a brave cut. You see the aerial roots right here, some dormant nodes right here. And this is a hard, uh, more of a woody kind of growth. You're gonna cut through there. And I did switch to more heavier duty uh, scissors because those little guys are good for trimming, but not for cutting through these uh, semi-thick um, stems here. So I don't know if I wanna cut this all the way back to having no growth on it. I think I'm just going to take the center out of this one for now and see what it looks like. And then cut these back as well, like so. This one needs cut back a lot. I might need to take more off of that one, I'm not sure. And any kind of flower bud, like I said, just trace it back and take off at least a third of the growth. And that's going to cause the plant to put on more of a branching and kind of dividing itself out which is what's going to help make the plant, you know, reinvigorate itself. And almost done, so we're going to take this one way back to there. And this one probably, this is actually new growth on this one, and I don't want to cut it off, but I really need to get this whole section here really tame, honestly, because it's kind of out of control. I'm going to take this way back to here. That's really disproportionate, and I think it's best to just sacrifice these blooms for now. Let the plant kind of put its energy into re, uh, you know, regrowing and filling back in. And this wasn't a hanging pot, so I couldn't even really get the the hanging in this hanging uh, twine there untangled because it, so many you know branches had grown through this thing. So now that the plant has been really pruned back. If there's anything unbalanced like this one here, you get to see a lot more of the overall structure of this plant. If there's anything that seems to be too much, which I think that's good. And that is a pretty substantial, pretty severe cut. This flower bud here needs to come off back to here. I might leave this one on here just as a, uh, just has something to look at while the plant recovers. So now that I've taken it back, and let's look at all this right here. Now this, you could make dozens and dozens of new plants from this right here. I'm gonna show you how, don't worry, super, super simple. But if you keep looking here, and I'll show you with my little pointer, see these leaves that are discolored and really weak and flimsy where they've been just shaded out for so long? This leaf here has that. Go ahead and take all of these leaves off as well. If you want, you can switch to more of your smaller scissors to get a more of a precision cut into these tighter areas. But right now is the time that you're doing this. You want to really go ahead and just take care of all the stuff all at once. So let me go ahead and clean this plant up. We'll come back. I'll show you how to propagate these super easily and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so now looking at this plant, you can see how much of the old growth has been removed and just how much more light is able to get into the center of this plant. As we kind of come in closer here, you can actually see the center of the plant now, whereas before it was way too crowded. A light is able to reach all of those little growing dormant buds in there, which should help them to uh, produce more uh, natural growth. It's gonna thicken this plant up and avoid the overly uh, trailing kind of 
but uh, long and kind of lanky look that these Kylan Coeys can get if they're not adequately pruned. So let's go ahead and shift gears now and talk about how to propagate your cuttings into brand new plants. All right, and so wrapping this video up really quickly, let me show you just how simple it is once you have all these cuttings, how to make more plants. Okay, so look for some aerial root formation right here, okay? And what you wanna do, like we were talking about before, is you wanna take off the growing tip with the flower bud on it. Okay, cut it back to this. Any kind of weak or old growth, like this dead stem, this leaf is a little yellow, discolored. Go ahead and get that out of here. So you have a nice little part. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this back here so that only the part, the, uh, part that was attached to the plant with the aerial roots is right here. So very simple, you guys, it's really simple. You don't really need to vary it too much, just enough to kind of stabilize the plant, push it around. Don't really water it too much. This is just pre-moistened, damp um, cactus and succulent mix. Now, this right here, if you follow along my aerial root video, this is a cutting I made of the same exact plant. I did the same thing. I just put that chopped off, put it on the dirt, and it has taken, it's putting on new growth, uh, it's healthy, it's happy, the leaves are bright, shiny, and green, so while they were in this container over there with the, uh, the original mother plant, uh, like I said, I couldn't get water into it, I could hardly fertilize it because there's so much growth in the way. So this has been fertilized, it's got some nice uh, rainwater put onto it, it's responding greatly, and if you uh, follow along and check back, I'll do an update whenever the mother plant has recovered from its uh, cutting back, and we'll show you what it looks like at that time. All right, guys, so thanks for following along with this little tutorial on how you can prune back your cowling koi plant, propagate new plants, and just have fun while doing it. All right, guys, from my hillside to yours, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.